Hi there, this is Dave from Motels, and I'm back in my non-animated form, just like this, to tell you about some V6 Hemi blueprints that Tom Rock found. And I do mean V6 Hemi, I'm not talking about a V8 Hemi, and this was something that was planned for the early 1950s, because the original Hemi, which of course at the time they called the dual racker, because it was the first Hemi not to require two cams, what they did instead was two rockers activated by a single cam. It was an ingenious design and it saved them a bunch of money and it made it possible to have a practical hemispherical head V8 engine in the 1951 Chrysler lineup. And then it spread on to the other brands after that. So 1951, you had your 331 Hemi. And of course, it's kind of funny because the guy who used to be in charge of uh, tuning Chrysler engines, Pete Hagenbuck, once told me, you know, here they are and they've got this incredible performance engine with a hemispherical head design that's just engineered for flat out performance. And what do they do? They make a tiny little 331 cubic inch version and they shove a two barrel carburetor on it. They were really big into engineering and they wanted the most efficient design they could get and the Hemi was it. They weren't thinking ahead too far in terms of how easy it would be to actually make these things and the answer is it was not easy to actually make these things. It was impossibly hard to make these things and that's why we never saw a V6 Hemi. A V8 Hemi made a lot of sense in a way Although you'll notice that eventually they change that Hemi into a polyspherical head, thinking, well, we'll get most of the benefits with a little bit less cost and a little less size. And then later on, they went to the wedge because they realized that, again, quoting Pete Hagen book, that silly polysphere didn't really do anything at all for them. So they had this, and the idea was that they would replace their old flathead straight-six engines, which were already, you know, reaching their sell-by date in the late 40s early 50s and they would replace these with a matching uh, v6 semi or more likely they were looking for the cheapest chrysler to have the v6 semi and then the pricier ones would have the exclusive v8 hemi and plymouth wouldn't have any at all and that seems to be the most likely path but let's talk about what we had here now there was an experimental engine the a173 according to willem weertman who later was in charge of all chrysler engines and this was uh, a dual cam design. And this would have been an early design before they figured out how to make them with a single cam because a dual cam design would have been too expensive even for the people running Chrysler Engineering at the time. It wasn't practical at that point in time. And this was a 235 cubic inch experimental engine. That's not the one that we have these blueprints of. Power plant and research and engine design also developed inline sixes with Hemi heads in addition to the V6. The one that these blueprints are showing was actually intended for production, but it was vetoed by an executive. And uh, in some ways we can say, well, that's a real shame. It would have been really, really cool. And in other ways we can say it's probably a good idea because it was kind of impractical and they were, again, expensive, slow to build, and you could get everything that you got out of it with by throwing cubic inches and a wedge head at it much cheaper and much faster. Of course, then Chrysler would have had a V6 in its heritage, and it probably would have been a much more efficient engine, but efficiency wasn't really on Americans' minds for the next 20 years after this. Not until about 1973 did people suddenly say, oh, wait, maybe gas mileage is a thing we should be concerned with. Just a coincidence, this was a 3.6 liter engine, just like today's Pentastar V6. One could actually see European exotic cars adapting this uh, Hemi V6 with suitable Weber carburation, rather than using a little Ford V8 or even a Hemi V8. It would have been really ideal for that purpose. A welcome replacement or supplement for the Flathead 6 for Chrysler alone, not for Dodge or Plymouth, adding to Chrysler's technological reputation, but it probably would have cost more than customers were willing to pay. These drawings show just how amazing those old-time engineers and draftsmen were. So that's basically the story of this engine. Uh, it was never meant to be. The V6 Hemi basically faded into obscurity. And there was no real proof of it until Tom Rock found these blueprints and he corresponded with Willem Wirtman and confirmed that yes, it was meant for production and no, it never actually got there. That's it for the on-topic part of our show today. 
But may I suggest that you visit njautoshow.com to see some vintage Chrysler and other cars in October. That's in New Jersey, if you happen to be around there. Uh, and it's put on by the Restored Rusty Relics. Also, no matter where you are, you can visit motels.com to find plenty of Mopar tales. This is Dave signing out.